everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be showcasing and benchmarking my new PC build. You can check it out right here. Very happy and pleased with how everything turned out. If you're interested in any of the parts or the components that you see here, the links to them will be in my video description below. You can see the nice, clean, minimal build that we have here. Now let's go ahead, let's look at it in more detail. So all the parts for this build can be found on Newegg and you can see we have them all right here. So that link below in the video will take you to this page where you'll be able to find all the parts individually to add to your build or to upgrade your current build. So let's go and let's look at them really quickly. Here's our motherboard again, guys. The Asus AMD AM4 RG Strix X570E gaming motherboard. They have multiple motherboard options for you depending on your budget and the features that you need. Then we can see the hard drive I picked, guys, I specifically went with this M.2 drive because I was looking for the fastest SSD available for video editing. So I'm really excited to have this one terabyte drive in my build. I got it without the heatsink because the motherboard already had a heatsink for our M.2 drive. You can buy it with or without. Then I picked up a 10 gig network card because 2.5 gigs with the motherboard isn't cutting it for me. Got to have that 10 gigs for my home network. So you can see that right there. They have a couple different brands and manufacturers to choose from. Since I was doing an ASUS board, I figured it makes sense to get an ASUS network card as well. Windows 10 Home is what I'm using, 64-bit. Here's our case, guys, the Silent Base 802 white with the window. They also have a black version. You can get it with and without the window if you want. So you can save a couple of dollars if you don't get the window, but I highly recommend spending the extra $10, it looks like, to get it with the window. The tempered glass is sweet. GPU, you can see right here, I have an RTX 3060 listed, but I'm actually using my RTX 2080 for this build since I decided to use this PC for video editing. But I'm actually taking my RTX 3060 and using that in my new streaming PC. So that's gonna be the hardest part about this build is finding a GPU. Next up, you can see our processor, the 3950X. I'm a big fan of this processor with all the cores and threads that we get. Next up, you can see our Dark Power 12, 750 watt overclockable power supply right here, if you're interested. Pretty cool. And then my favorite RAM, we got the G Skill Trident Z Neo optimized for AMD Ryzen. So we have 64 gigs in this build. You can choose the capacity you want, the speed, and the latency that you're after. Just make sure with this build, same thing, it was defaulting to 2133 for the speed instead of our 3600 megahertz. So I went ahead within the BIOS settings, you're able to change that. So not a big deal at all. And it runs great at 3600 megahertz. And that's just a quick look at our parts list right here for this build on Newegg. Here's the PC up close. You can see we have our beautiful white Be Quiet Silent Base 802 windowed case. So it's in white with the tempered glass window panel that we have removed right now. Then inside you can see the components. First up we have our Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 cooler sitting on top of an AMD 3950X CPU. You can see we have our RTX 2080 GPU for now. We have an ASUS 10 gig network card. We have 64 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z Neo RAM optimized for AMD. So we have four 16 gig sticks. You can see our motherboard right here too. We have the Asus ROG Strix X570E gaming motherboard. And we have an M.2 drive installed, a one terabyte M.2 NVMe Gen 4 from PNY. It's their XLR8 gaming solid state drive. And we have underneath here our power shroud. We have our Be Quiet 750 watt power supply. Now let's go ahead, let's look at this from the backside. Here it is from the backside with our back panel removed. You can see our cable management. We have SSD spots right here. We have our fan hub with room for additional cooling. Look at all the expansion bays that we have. Plenty of room to add a bunch of different hard drives and storage options right here. You can see our Dark Power 12 750 watt power supply tucked in there with some extra cables for future expansion. From the back, you can see our exhaust fan, our motherboard IO, our RTX 2080, our 10 gig card. We have our power supply overclocking switch. Then further down, you can see our power supply right here with our toggle switch and our power connector. Here it is from the top. You can see all of our ports and IO right here, our big power button front and center. We also have two removable and swappable panels 
So they have nice insulation on the back. You can see this one's vented magnets right there to keep it in place. We can also attach this included piece if we want even more ventilation up top. We can choose between those two options, which is really nice. So we can swap that out in the future if we ever expand or add additional cooling. Same can be said for the front panel as well too. We can swap that out with this included piece that comes with the case. If we wanna have a solid cover on the front with additional sound isolation and noise dampening, let's go ahead, let's change those right now. Here we go, you can see it on right there. Now let's go ahead, let's power everything up and try it out. So first up, you can see our Geekbench 5 results. This is a free test that anybody can do on their PC. So you can try this out and see the results that you get compared to our build. We got a single core score of 1300, a multi-core score of 1427.8. You can see our system info right here. There's our Ryzen 9 3950X, 16 cores, 32 threads, 3.5 gigahertz base frequency, 64 gigs of memory, And you can see down here, our single core performance. We'll just slowly scroll through them. And now you can see our multi-core performance right here. So check that out. There's our score again of 1427.8. We'll just keep browsing through. And there you go, that's the results of our Geekbench 5 test. Now you can see our Cinebench R23 results right here. We got a CPU multi-core score of 22.98.7 and a CPU single core score of 12.99. You can see our system specs again. You can see our ranking right here compared to some other processors and how our system and performance stacks up. We can look at the single core as well, so you can see that. And then we have our MP ratio of 17.70X and how that relates to those other processors right there. But we're showing number three across the board for all three of these scores using Cinebench. Now you can see our SSD benchmarks right here. So this drive is advertised as being able to get speeds up to 7,500 megabytes a second for our read and 6850 megabytes a second for our write. But with both pieces of software, we did not get those speeds, unfortunately. And I have no idea how those speeds are even calculated in a laboratory, but these are the real world results that you can expect. Probably a pretty healthy range of the performance that you'll get with these drives. So you can see with AS SSD, we got 5,500 for our read and 4,200 for our write. With Crystal, we got 7,000 for our read and 5,200 for our write. So you can see we got everything set up right here. So you can see within Windows, our network settings, we're showing our speed of 10 gigabits per second. So you can check out that data right there. You can also see the network card installed right here under Task Manager. Now we have a shared network folder. Let's go ahead, let's take this previous project, let's copy it over to this computer, and let's see the speeds that we're getting. So here you go, you can see we're getting 500 megabytes a second for our speed. You can see our send and receive right here. So we're getting, you know, five gigabits per second. For megabytes for 10 gigs, we should be getting around 1250 megabytes if it was running at its true theoretical capacity right there. So we're getting about half of that, around five gig network speeds transferring this, you know, 60 plus gig file folder full of a bunch of different video clips and scenes. So using those same computers, I wanted to conduct an iPerf3 test so you can see the results right here. We were averaging 8.6 gigabits per second. Last but not least, really quickly, I want to show you guys that with this motherboard, we're able to install optional software. So we have the Armory Crate installed where we can get this nice real-time dashboard to monitor our PC. So we can see our CPU specs right here. Check that out. We have Aurora Sync options for RGB lighting controls that we can change and customize. Different scenario profiles, fan speed adjustments, game launcher, our profiles. We have a bunch of different features that we can build out but you can see frequency. Here's our temperature in real time. There's our CPU temp. We don't even have to be in the BIOS or anything. We can see all that right here, which is pretty cool. So you can see the temperature, CPU motherboard, CPU package. Here's our usage. So you can see that right there. Look at how cool everything looks. I love the displays. And here's our fan speeds. So you can see our CPU fan 
and our chassis fans right here. We don't have a chassis fan one. I couldn't reach the cable there, so it's plugged in to chassis fan two. So check that out. You can see that all in real time. You can highlight, click on what you need. And you can see it right up here. And we got our nice voltage monitoring as well. Again, those same profile settings that we can access to change some of the RGB lighting with the board, or if we have compatible devices, we could go to here and you can see we can choose those and customize everything together. So it's really a nice dashboard to see all the important stats in real time for your PC build. So overall, this build turned out great. Very happy with how everything looks. Very minimal, and I have plenty, plenty, plenty of room for expansion in the future. And this build is super powerful for my needs. I'm very happy with how everything turned out. It's very quiet. It's very powerful. And I think it looks great too, even though it's not a super fancy build or anything like that with a bunch of RGBs, liquid cooling, or anything along those lines. It's simple, straightforward, and it'll get the job done. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.